This is Dr. Tom Rosell. After 43 years of practice and over a million patient visits, the Rosell Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellecare.com. That's rosellecare.com. The information provided on Dr. Tom Rosell Live by Dr. Tom Rosell DC, interview guests, show co-hosts, or substitute hosts is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. It is for general information purposes only. Information from this broadcast should not replace the appropriate consultation and examination process by a licensed physician. Always consult your own physician prior to changing any current medical directive or prescription. Welcome to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. Indeed, I am live, and it is a lovely day outside. So hopefully you're going to get outside and enjoy it. But, you know, right now you're listening to me, and we want to make sure that, you know, that you get the most updated information on how to protect your health. You know, years ago, I wrote a book, and it's, years are going by quickly. It's like six, seven years ago now, and seven years ago, I think, and it's called Ageless Health, Health is a Do-It-Yourself Program, which is still available. You can get it on most media formats, or you could go to the Roselle Center website, rosellecare.com, or go to drtomrosell.com, D-R-T-O-M-R-O-S-E-L-L-E.com, and you can still get it, and attached to it, there's a video there with uh, that was done by PBS. They did a program, a 90-minute uh, presentation on the work that we do in our world and six patients who had failed under uh, traditional allopathic conservative care that responded completely 100 percent through natural therapeutics. So it's it's worth uh, the look, you know, check it out. And if you 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 uh, Google, you know, Asia South, Dr. Tom Rosell, you'll find all kinds of things. But having said that, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about your immune system and some of the things that you can do to make sure that it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. But particularly from a, uh, we're going to talk about two very specific products. One is called melatonin. It's a hormone that's produced in your brain by uh, an area called the pineal gland. And we're going to talk about niacin or uh, and its cohort, niacinamide. But I think you're going to find it extremely fascinating that there's so many things that you can do to bring the body around and strengthen it, particularly in the world where we're trying to, you know, prevent anything from happening to us. There's so much controversy about, you know, what's happening out there with the viral patterns and so forth. So my job is to say, how can you protect yourself and make yourself stronger just really across the board? Our platform has always been asking the question. The question is, why does something happen in the first place? Why do you end up with a cold or a virus or a bacterial infection? Why is it that some people can be exposed to the same insult, if you will, and not come down with anything? Well, there's a reason. It's called your immune system. If your immune system is working strong, not a problem. There's some people that, for example, uh, are exposed to a herpes infection, you know, herpes one being the cold sores you have in your mouth, and herpes two is the uh, the infections that you have in the genitalia, and they never have a problem. Some people just walk by and they get it. So what's the difference in immunological responses? Well, it has to do with three primary triggering mechanisms, and then we're going to talk about some of the things that you can do to protect that. First is the neurological system, your brain, your spinal cord, the 31 pairs of nerves that come off your spine. They divide, by the way, each one of those nerves at different spinal levels divide. One branch goes to the muscular system. The other branch goes to organ systems. That's why it's so profound that if you get good structural care on a regular basis, that your immune system stays intact because things are working the way they were meant to work. The second is biochemistry, bioelectrical. You know, all the things that you put into your body that shouldn't be there, all the things that you need more of that, you know, you're not getting the right types of foods and so forth that you neglect or you don't do adequately or you don't want to eat or whatever it is, your choice, or the poisons that they put in the food, the adulterations. We've had uh, several programs where we've talked about the genetic modifications of foods that are just deleterious to your system. And when we look at that, and then the, the last piece is how the mind works. 
It's the thought process. It's the decisions that you make. If you think you can, you're able to do something. If you think you can't, your body goes in agreement with you and says, okay, I'm good. You know, we can't do this. We can't do this. And you succumb. That's why somebody who has a very advanced cancer uh, and is told that they're going to pass away uh, in the back of their brain, sometimes they say, who gives you the right to tell me I'm going to die? I don't think so. And they not only, you know, weather the storm, but they fully resolve the condition where it goes away completely extremely powerful, but the thing that is that they all work together. We're going to talk a little bit about the biochemical side of the triad today, and we're going to talk about melatonin and niacin and the effect that it has. And, you know, those of you who know me, I'm always looking and reading and researching simply because of the fact that I've got to present papers and I teach around the planet. And uh, obviously, I've been restricted to the United States over the last 18 months or so, uh, getting ready to break that habit and, and extend beyond that. But nevertheless, I was doing some research on a presentation that I will be doing in October uh, at the uh, nutrition conference that I'll be attending. There's going to be probably 300 docs from around the country. And I'm going to be doing it on the impact of a product that many of you heard me talk about. We've had the uh, operational head of this company, uh, Phoenix Biotechnological uh, Research Laboratories on the program. It's called Oleander, um, and they've put it out in a homeopathic form as well. You can find that on my website, drtomrosell.com. Uh, just scroll down to the bottom of the page, and you're going to find that and several other things. So, you know, check it out. But more importantly, the process of research leads me in a lot of different directions. So I, I go into uh, PubMed, uh, which is one of the, the most prestigious areas uh, within the medical community for information sources and so forth. Very well researched. Uh, I get into the Harvard journals and, and the like. But I want to start out by talking about melatonin. Melatonin has been you know looked at now and studied intently for decades. And, you know, they, they put out uh, products on, on the market, one milligram, two milligrams, 10 milligrams. And most physicians, most doctors will prescribe melatonin to get you to sleep. But it has a much greater deep ramification when it comes to building your immune system. And not just at very, very low levels, at extremely high levels. So uh, most of the research is done, you know, with 50 milligrams, which is it. Oh, my God, 50 milligrams. That's a lot of melatonin. But melatonin from the pineal gland in your brain that comes out at nighttime and this height is between one and four o'clock in the morning only comes out if you sleep in a very dark room with no ambient light, with a little bit of chill to the room at its optimum level. Melatonin modulates a wide range of functions in the body and affects the immune system, significantly impacting the immune system. Uh, there's a large number of reports that implicate melatonin as a uh, immune modulatory compound. That means that it kind of regulates things. It still, however, remains unclear about how melatonin actually affects immu uh, immunological systems, but it's known that it does in its significance. So they're trying to find out the why, but we're going to try to walk through that a little bit today. Some authors argue that melatonin is a uh, immunological stimulant, and you know a lot of studies have described it as an anti-inflammatory as well. Um, those of you who are going to be privileged to see my latest uh, podcast, by the way, it's going to be called Ageless Health by Dr. Tom Roselle. Uh, we'll let you know all about that, and you're going to be able to find that this week. We're launching, I think, on Wednesday. Um, Dr. John Lawrence from Sarasota, Florida. John is a brilliant doctor, uh, chemist, and this is a guy that turned me on to using high dosages of melatonin with patients uh, who are struggling immunologically. And this is about three, four years ago when I really understood this. So obviously it, it caught my attention. So the, the data that's out there shows it as an anti-inflammatory pathway, but it's also uh, an immune buffer. It acts as a stimulant under basal or immunosuppressive conditions um, and it's in the uh, it's exacerbated by any type of acute inflammatory reaction. 
um, the the clinical evidence uh, that uh, that shows melatonin that functions under uh, several types of immune conditions and and you know such as infection and autoimmunity and vaccinations and immune essence and so forth it's important that we understand this because it's showing tremendous amount of potential in upregulating our body's immunological responses to all types of infections regardless of what they are but particularly for viral infections there's an article that was really interesting, and it was uh, the Functional Journal of Molecular Sciences, uh, which is a very, very well-known journal. And I read it through because I was, again, prepping for this presentation that I'm doing uh, this uh, this coming October, actually. And, you know, melatonin, uh, it's, it's it's a really interesting situation where it's triggered, its release continues to maintain itself throughout the day, not just at nighttime. And, you know, it is present in certain t- bacteria and other types of organisms. Um, it's in plants and, and um, funguses and so forth. Uh, virtually is, is prevalent across the board. Melatonin is converted from something called tryptophan. Many of you know what tryptophan is. It's that thing that makes you sleepy because it produces uh, uh, serotonin. Uh, when you, you know, when you have uh, turkey and you eat too much of it, that's the tryptophan that's kind of putting you to sleep, that you want to take that nap after Thanksgiving. Uh, but tryptophan uh, goes to serotonin followed by something called acetylation and really all that means is that melatonin is being converted into another molecule and that melatonin pathway you know reflects a conversion you know throughout a whole bunch of different steps across the board uh the production of melatonin as i said is from the pineal gland and it's a little p-shaped gland way into the back of your head and it has a rhythm and it peaks as i said earlier at nighttime and it has its lowest level when you're in front of light. So, the, you know, those of you who go to bed with lights on or you have a night light on or you have ambient light on, you're producing very low levels of melatonin. So anytime that you're awake, it's not working the way you're supposed to. So if you're not working, you know, it's kind of a catch-22 because if you don't have enough melatonin, you can't sleep well either. The The mechanisms really are two different pathways. It binds uh you know, at a certain membrane level within the body, and it signals intercellular pathways to produce, uh, it's called a radical scavengers. So all these inflammation, these irritations are eaten up by this mechanism that is triggered by uh, melatonin. It's kind, of, it's kind of weird, but it works really, really well. So somebody who has to heal, number one, has to sleep. Somebody who uh, is more susceptible to all kinds of things is not sleeping the way they should. So there's a substantial amount of information out there that has identified the, uh, the if you will, the extra uh, pineal sources of melatonin in a number of organs and tissues and cells throughout the body. So what I'm say, trying to say is produced all over the place, and that's why it's so important. The body knows that it's important. You know, over the last 20 years, the research shows that the, the intestinal tract, the gastrointestinal tract, has uh, confirmed, you know, as an important source of melatonin, along with the skin and your eyes, the retina, the back of uh, the eyes, and so forth. And a lot of people who ha- have immunological reactions, have eyesight problems, have gastrointestinal problems, are going to be generally sick. Their, their, uh, their whole body's immunological system is not working the way they're supposed to. So, you know, what's the person to do? How do you get it? Do you start taking melatonin? Well, in the short term, yes. But the whole idea is to get your system to upregulate it as well. Um, you know, when I smashed my head, if you will, many of you remember the story that I've told on air. I went down to see Dr. Lawrence in Sarasota, Florida. And one of the things that he did is he put me on melatonin to get me to sleep continually through the night, but also, more importantly, to make sure that I had the ability to upregulate the pathways that suppress inflammation in my body because my body was fully inflamed. My head was not working much at all. 
So you have to make sure that you sleep and inflammation decreases to be able to get there. We're going to get that into the program. I'm going to talk to you about how it affects T cell formation in the body. I'm going to tell you what it does with something called CD4, which is they really became aware of that when uh, they started dealing with patients who were HIV infected and ultimately transferred into uh, to AIDS. Again, that's a viral pattern as well. And there's a lot of research being done right now on its application and utilization with this crazy viral pattern that we have out in front of us. So that's what we're going to be looking at, and we're going to try to make sure that you understand it and that you can do certain things to help yourself. But the important piece is that you have to be able to sleep. And if you're not sleeping, you're not going to heal, and your immune system is going to tank. And if you have too many lights around you, it's going to be one of those things that your body is really going to be susceptible across the board to things you don't want it to be. We're coming up to a break. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. Don't go away. I'll be right back after some very important messages. Welcome back, everybody. This is Dr. Tom Rizal. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. Indeed, I am. It's a lovely day outside. I intend to go for a walk. I don't know about the rest of you, but it's so that nice outside. It's kind of cool, you know, compared to what we've been uh, looking at and doing. So enjoy it while you got it, as they say. So have a great day, great afternoon after you listen to the program. And we're going to give you an opportunity, by the way. We're going to be developing an app that you can not only click in to all the information that we provided you on Dr. Tom Rizal Live, but also our new podcast, Ageless Health with Dr. Tom Rosell. You're going to enjoy that. Uh, we're launching our, our first podcast. You'll be able to see me and my guests uh, this Wednesday, I think will be the first one. So check it out, Ageless Health with Dr. Tom Rosell. And <clears throat> stay tuned. We're going to be uh, publishing two to three of them a week. Yep, it's going to be a little bit of work, but we're going to get it done. And we do it simply because we want you to have the data and we're going to interview some of the top people around the world uh, with everything that we do. It's uh, you deserve the information. You make sure that you're getting it accurately. We're talking about your immune system today, but from a different place, from uh, pineal uh, that produces something called melatonin, and then we're going to be talking about something else called niacin and how it affects inflammatory pathways in the body. So let's start with simply this. If you're not sleeping, you can't heal. If you're not sleeping, your immune system crashes. If you have a question, give me a call. 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. Love to take your calls today. I am live and will be happy to answer anything that you got in your mind. It has to do with the immunological response or virtually anything else as well. But let's get back into talking about this pineal just for a little bit. You know, there's a tremendous body of evidence out there that basically is saying that between the, the neuroendocrine system, that means your nervous system and your organ systems and your immune system, uh, they talk back and forth. And the, there's a, a biodirectional communication circuit that causes the system to do what it's supposed to be doing. And when you start looking at the hormones that are involved, there's something called adrenal cortical trophic hormone or ACTH that affects your fight flight system, your adrenal system, your anti, your anti-inflammatory system. Uh, there's something called vasoactive intestinal peptide VIP. Uh, this keeps your, uh, your intestinal system working the way it's supposed to your somatos, uh, somatostatin and your growth hormones that allows the body to repair itself and replace tissue. The pioneal gland, as we said, its main Productor is melatonin. And we have to understand how intimately important this is across the board. Uh, they've done studies where they've taken the pineal gland in animals and they've ablated it, I mean, destroyed it. And what they note is that there's massive weight loss. It's because all these mechanisms that allow for tissue repair and regeneration are gone. And lymph tissue, the lymphoid organs, uh, they decrease their ability to respond almost immediately. There's very specific innate capacities with this thing. So you have to make sure that you understand how important this is. We're going to talk a little bit more of it when we come back after the break. This is something that can really make a difference in your life. So get it, pay attention, call somebody, tell them to listen. We're coming up to that break. I'll be right back. Don't go away. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. Dr. Tom Rosell Live continues now on 105.9 FM, WMAL. 
Welcome back, everybody. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell live. Indeed, I am. Give me a call, 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. So we're talking about your immune system, and we're talking about two products. We're going to get into the second one in a minute. We're talking about melatonin, and that's the hormone, if you will, that your pineal gland that sits in your brain, little guy, about the size of a pea towards the back, and it's so important. And, you know, people say, well, you know, you know melatonin is not that important. Well, the research has been actually going on for years, and it actually does a tremendous amount of things. It increases your lymphocyte counts in uh, the body to uh, basically uh, go after things like uh, you know, bacterium and viral patterns and, thermo, uh, and so forth. Your thymus gland, which also is necessary in the production of T cells. Now, how much should you be taking? Well, if you go into traditional literature, you're going to see that it's uh, very low levels. They're going to talk about maybe five milligrams, 10. Some of them will stretch to 50. And up till about four years ago, I was of the ilk that I really never used more than 50 milligrams orally with a patient. But having met a dear doctor who's a brilliant man in my estimation uh, out of Sarasota, Florida, I found out that sometimes to reset that system, not only that you have to have sleep, but you have to get to sleep to be able to do it. So it's kind of a catch-22. So you have to make sure that the room is cool. You have to make it completely black, that you don't have any cell phones or computer screens or ambient lights anywhere in the room. There's nothing leaking in. It's got to be black. You are a cave dweller, everyone, when you're sleeping. And so we start using 100, 200, even 400 milligrams of melatonin. And the worst form is actually the tablets that you take. Melatonin, uh, the way that we can get it and use it is actually a, a rectal suppository and is absorbed m- much easier and much better. Also, liposomal forms are better that way. But I don't want you going off and doing this on your own. I'm not telling you to do this. What I'm saying is that the research indicates that and what we use with our patients is heavier dosages to get their immune system to respond adequately. But it's going to stimulate the body's ability to increase the organ systems that uh, fight uh, immune systems like spleen and bone marrow and so forth. It'll increase the ability for them to produce some things like killer cells and you know, to, and something called monocytes, which is a type of white blood cell. And all of these things are very, very well documented. Um, it increases the uh, the basal rate uh, within the body so your body can begin to repair tissue. But do you ever wonder why as people get older, uh, they become more susceptible as they get older, their thymus gland, this little gland that sits underneath your breastbone, which is supposed to be one of your primary immunological uh, stimulators and protectors doesn't work so well. So they get thin, they lose muscle weight. It's because of all the things that we touched upon, the adrenal cortical stimulating hormone, the production of growth hormone and so forth. But you can reverse much of this by resetting that system. And the literature, if you do the research, is really interesting when you read through it. And it's something that is, and the, the, the question that I had when I first started using this, well, what happens if you use a lot of melatonin, does it suppress your body's ability to produce its own melatonin? And the answer is no. What happens if you don't reset the system, if you don't repair it afterwards, the body goes back to producing what it was producing before you started taking it. Interesting, right? Well, that's how the body works. It's an amusing thing. This is a program that I should invite all of you in and we should you know, talk about actually for about two hours to really get it and give you, you know, visuals and show you how it works and break it down and into easier pathways. But let's talk about the other piece. Let's talk about B, uh, B3, which is niacin, and the amount of research that's out there with that subject as well. Uh, niacin or B3, it can be niacin or it can be niacinamide, um, are basically the, the different forms of the same thing. Uh, the research is showing that mega dosages of niacin may be able to help our bodies fight some of the, the most deadly bacteria and superbugs that are out there. And most people are deficient in most of the B complexes. 
be careful of what you take with this. You know, you really need to check B3, niacin, vasodilates as, as one of its components. That means it increases your circulatory pattern, the small vessels, the capillaries, the last ones. And you can get really hot. You can flush like crazy. Uh, niacin has been known forever to modulate lipids in the body. So when your cholesterol is too, you know, uh, above normal, you're, you know, you're in that range where you've got to, your doctor tells you that you better take whatever it is to drop it down because you're in trouble. Sometimes just taking a time release B3 or niacin will do it very nicely. And we've seen that result in so many patients, I'm sorry, tongue tied this morning. So think it through. What else can it do? So when given in dosages higher than found in most normal diets, and it's kind of residual, most of you don't eat well anyway, B3 boosts the immune system by as much as a thousand times and can kill all kinds of life-threatening uh, infections. And, uh, and these are ones that are called uh, methicillin-resistant, things like staphylococcus or uh, you know, MARS and so forth or MRSA, I'm sorry, it's important that you understand this. The information is there. Do your homework. Get out and get it done. Start reading. Don't just take, you know, what you're hearing on any platform from a talking head. There's so many things that you can do to make a difference. There's a guy by the name of George Liu. He's a pediatric infectious disease physician at Cedars uh, Sinai Medical Institute in Los Angeles. And he led a team of, uh, that investigated uh, B3 or niacin's potential to kill uh, superbugs in both mi uh, mice and in humans, and human blood is what they use. So they use cultures to see what would happen. The research found that extremely high doses of B3 stimulate gene involved in the production of specialized immune cells. And what these guys are called, they're called neutrophils. So your neutrophils, for the most part, go after bacterium. They, uh, they sweep away these, uh, these harmful bacteria, boosting the immune system response to staph and MRSA, you know, up to from 100 to 1,000 percent. That's huge, and it's extremely well documented. So remember the name, George Liu, L-I-U, and Cedars sinai Medical uh, Center in Los Angeles. So... You know, Lou explained that mega dosages of B3 uh, is called nicotinamide, by the way, in, in the science uh, will do not kill the pathogen directly, but it stimulates your body's ability to go after it. So what it does, is it hits the white blood cell, right? This neutrophil we just talked about. So when you hear me say neutrophil or monocytes or um you know, eosinophils or mono, you know, those types of things, they're all types of white blood cells. So what does that mean? So if I said money and we said nickel, dimes, quarters, dollar bills, they all have value. In white blood cell world, you have a total white blood cell count, but all these subfractions, these lymphocytes, these neutrophils, these eosinophils, the monocytes, the basophils, they all have function. They all do certain things. So when you look at the neutrophils and how they react in the body when they come into a chronic infected situation, that's their job. They go get the bacteria. They eat it up. They destroy it. So what Dr. Liu said, he said, because we don't know a lot of information about what's the dose, and if we take uh, too high of a level, we could potentially have side effects. And side effects are not crazy. They're... Uh, you're increasing your circulatory. You're going to feel hot. You're going to feel like you're burning up when you get too much uh, B3. But what happens is that within about 15 minutes, that all goes away. It kind of increases what it's supposed to do, and then it kind of shuts down. But there's no evidence that megadoses of uh, niacin, nicotinamide, cause significant side effects of any sort, and that was their finding. And so along with the correct dose to fight drug-resistant things like staph infections and, and MRSA, uh, it has its effect. There's things that need to be looked at and to be done. So here's another piece of the puzzle. Here's another piece of immunological response. And we know with any viral pattern, a lot of the people that are going into the hospital with uh, 
pneumonias and that's what they're dying from because of the high levels of inflammatory reaction. Just maybe using melatonin and adding a little niacin, niacinamide in a time release form. By the way, if you don't want the flushing, use a time release form. Uh, it's the one that we use with, the, with our, our practice. Much of the research was done on pretty decent levels. They're pretty high levels, but I want you to understand that you have the ability to really make a difference in your world immunologically. So we're talking about diet. We're talking about, you know, the ability to upregulate things that are important. There was a, uh, there was a uh, study that was done at Mount Sinai Research Institute in New York, another very pre prestigious organization. Uh, it went in to show that this B3, by the way, which is a water-soluble vitamin, so your body kind of gets rid of it, uh, make sure that you're getting enough of it. Otherwise, what's the symptoms? What, what things that could you notice if you didn't have enough B3? Well, things like indigestion, fatigue, uh, little cracks on your the lips. You know, they're called canker sores, right? Uh, you could feel like you want to vomit all the time, poor circulation, depression. All those are mild deficiency symptoms. There's something called pellagra, which is what it was known for years ago. And pellagra uh, is uh, characterized by cracks, scaly skin, uh, even dementia and diarrhea. It generally tested, uh, you know, uh, across the board with, you know, you can do some vitamin surveys and so forth. But niacin deficiency also causes burning in the mouth and a swollen, bright red tongue. So when you have somebody that has a really red tongue, and just say, you know, stick out your tongue, let me look at it. And if it's really red across the board, not just the tip of it, the tip of it means you've got a heart problem, but across the board, that's usually a B3 deficiency. And you have to make sure that you upregulate that. Otherwise, you're talking about all kinds of problems. It deals with cholesterol problems. Um, high doses, as I said earlier, can cause flushing the skin, give your stomach a little upset, uh, some dizziness, blurred vision, but all they're, they're transient. They're not permanent. They don't really uh, cause anything ongoing according to the uh, the research out there. And even diabetics, type 1 diabetics particularly, uh, the body's immune system mistakenly attacks the cells in the pancreas that makes insulin. And it eventually breaks it down over a period of time. So type 1 is quite significant. Niacinamide may help protect those cells. And that's what the research shows. Again, going back to Mount Sinai and the work that they were doing. Again, I'm quoting the sources. You know, researchers have also looked at whether high doses of niacinamide, niacin, might reduce the risk of, you know, type 1 diabetes in children, so juvenile onset diabetes. And one study found that it did. But another larger study found that it did not protect against developing type 1 diabetes. So more research is really needed when it comes to young children. So it's those that kind of, you know, you get older, you're a late teens, you get an adult, and you develop this type 1 pattern. Uh, but with type 2 by, uh, diabetes, uh, it's a more complicated situation, but it's an inflammatory reaction that takes place, and we know that that can make a huge difference. We've seen studies in... Uh, Alzheimer's disease and the utilization of niacin and cataracts and so forth and skin conditions across the board. Uh, the evidence says that use of B3 in those types of things, even migraine headaches, migraine, migraine headaches are often an, uh, an inflammatory problem with the vessels that go to the brain and due to toxicities and due to exposures and due to constriction of the vessels and so forth, uh, alcoholism and emotion sickness. Matter of fact, in a lot of your uh, alcoholic sanatoriums, they use niacin in conjunction with NAC or N-acetylcysteine. So there's lots of things out there. So what could you eat that has? Well, beets have a lot of niacin in it. They also have a lot of oxalates, uh, beef liver, uh, beef kidney, and so forth. We're coming up to a break. I got so much more. I wish I had five hours to talk about this one subject with you today. It's really an important subject, but we'll come back. Remember, you're listening to the most up-to-date information that we can find for you. Don't go away. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. I'll be right back. Washington's Mall, 105.9 FM, WMAL.
Welcome back, everybody. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell live as you do every Sunday at 11 a.m. on the Eastern Seaboard. Those of you on the other coast, you know the drill. Thank you for listening. Appreciate that. And as always, my heart goes out to the men and women in the armed forces. We salute you and we thank you and we appreciate you because without you, we wouldn't have the capacity to do the things that we do. And as always, if you can get to me, I will respond to you. And you can do that simply by going to drtomrosell.com, D-R-T-O-M-R-O-S-E-L-L-E.com, and I will get back to you. And Or you can go to rosellcare.com. Both sites are interlinked to each other, and I will never ignore you. I'll make sure that we respond to you. We're talking about melatonin and niacin today, both of them being a very significant immune modulator. The research is there. And I'm preparing for a presentation that I have to do in October to a group of about 300 doctors down in Florida. And so I'm getting into things. And this is fresh on my mind. And I wanted to share it with you. And it's things that we've known about for a while and we've used with many of our patients. Also, I want to remind you that coming up very quick, it should be this Wednesday, we're launching our first podcast. It'll be visual. You'll be able to see me and my guests. Uh, we'll have some of the, the most amazing people from around the world on that program. So it's Ageless Health with Dr. Tom Rosell. We'll try to get that information out to you and, and part of our uh, media advertising. You'll be able to find it. And we're going to interview some of the top people in every health discipline uh, everywhere. And you deserve it. You need to know the truth about all kinds of things. And we're going to develop an app so you can log in anytime that you want to from your phones. Uh, it's fun. I'm looking forward to bringing you as much data as I possibly can. We're going to close up a little bit on niacin. I just want you to remember that niacin does have a side effect. It's called flushing. And generally, you get around 50 milligrams or so. What causes the flushing? What causes the activation? Well, if you have enough hydrochloric acid in your stomach, that's your normal digestive enzyme in your stomach, uh, you're going to flush pretty quickly. Matter of fact, when we were in school years ago, we used to give uh, incoming freshmen uh, niacin-laced glasses with punch. And they would uh, immediately start flushing and think that they were dying and they'd run off to the 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 clinic, and there was nothing more than that. But at the end of the day, the bottom line is is that that uh, is a side effect. It's called the niacin flush. It only lasts a little bit of time. At very high dosages, it can lower cholesterol. Uh, we're talking about 500 milligrams or more. I have some patients that are taking a lot more than that. But don't go off and take that much without consulting somebody like us. There, there are other things that you have to be aware of a history of you know, liver disease and kidney stones or stomach ulcers. Uh, you shouldn't be taking niacin supplements without guidance. So that's a codicil. So if you have any kind of liver dysfunction, if you have any kind of kidney function problems, or if you have stomach ulcers, don't go do this. You know, uh, those with diabetes or gallbladder disease, uh, you need to be really under guidance to get this done. There's levels that can, you can do this with, but again, make sure that you're you're dealing with somebody who really understands the application of niacin and niacinamide. Um, they can, and the other piece is, and the things I warn patients is that they can make allergy symptoms worse because in the initial uh, kick-in, they increase histamine. Uh, so if you have uh, very significant allergies this time of the year, I'd be real careful about doing that. Give us a call. Call our nutrition department or talk to one of our doctors and get under their care. Uh, that will make a difference. People with low blood pressure really should be really careful with it because increasing the blood supply, the vasodilation, uh, will drop your blood pressure even more. So if you're on medications to drop it down, this could drop it even more. So don't take niacin if you have a history of gout or blood pressure that's being controlled by medication, you really need to have somebody guide you through this. Now, we're not talking about low levels of niacin. We're talking about significant high levels of niacin. You're not going to get hurt by taking 10 milligrams of niacin. People with coronary disease, you need to be under the supervision of the doctor. There's so much I could talk to you about. You can get a hold of me at drtomrazell.com. Remember, I do this program every week and give you the data that I'm giving you for one reason only, simply this. I love you all. You deserve it. See you next week. Take care of yourself. Are you dental phobic? Do you neglect your dental health because of fear and anxiety? 
A beautiful smile begins with exceptional dental care, and you can trust in the expertise of Soft Touch Dental Care and Dr. Michael Chung. Soft Touch Dental Care is unlike any dentist office you'll ever experience. Their warm and welcoming environment is designed to soothe fears and anxiety the moment you arrive, and they're especially pleased to pamper their honored guest patients. Dr. Michael Chung is a professional and leading expert in all areas of comprehensive dentistry, including cosmetic, sedation, neuromuscular, TMJ, and implant dentistry. Offering state-of-the-art technology, Dr. Chung can give you the smile of your dreams. Arrange for a complimentary consultation today with Dr. Michael Chung and experience the expertise that makes Dr. Michael Chung so unique. Call 703-319-6990. That's 703-319-6990. Or visit bestinsmile.com. That's bestinsmile.com. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, author of Ageless Health. Health is a do-it-yourself program. My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health Is a Do-It-Yourself Program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com. 